Alrighty, it looks like we're live now on the YouTubes and the Twitches, and I'll just put my uh, links in the chat, and then we'll get going here. Um, I am a Ramsey Solutions certified financial coach, and you can schedule a free financial consultation slash assessment. At calendly.com slash coach Steve Money. Link is at the top of the chat and in the video description. Uh, you can email me about anything, anything on my channel, anything having to do with financial coaching, uh, whatever's on your mind. I have a ton of different things on my channel video games, computer stuff, uh, Oak Island. Uh, a bunch of stuff on there. Let's see. And that is coach. Steve money at gmail.com and it's also right there right above my head on the webcam frame and donations if you like what you are seeing on the channel you can support me by donating at paypal.me slash coach Steve money every little bit does indeed help Alrighty, well, let's get going here. Get rid of that. Um, and we usually start out like this. Alrighty, here we go. And tech support, what? Tech support, tech support. Maybe occasionally a witty retort. Tech support, tech support. Don't forget your covers on your TPS reports. Reports. That's all I got for that. So far. Uh, so, yeah. Let's get into it. We go to tech support slash r slash tech support. No, reddit.com slash r slash tech support. My mistake. Uh, and uh, let's see. Let me get that uh, tech support logo off. There we go. Alrighty. So let's support, um, sort by new. And here we go. This from new pause. 3855. Windows 10 unable to launch NVIDIA GeForce Experience 030X0003 error. All right, well, let's see. And they've tried uh, everything, but nothing is working. Uh, tried real installing uh, GeForce Experience. Uh, Use DDU, that's uh, device driver uninstalled or reinstalled drivers. You don't need that to uninstall drivers. Uh, don't I don't know if that has any adware or not. But uh, as always, when downloading stuff, be careful. Don't download crap. Uh, let's see. Change settings and services. Change ownership on NVIDIA folders, even the hidden ones. Interesting. That's an advanced uh, trick there. So let's see. Um, ba -ba -bong. Try deleting. And this is, of course, the... the uh, G Force Experience is for NVIDIA video cards. It includes the drivers and some other stuff. Uh, let's see. Resetting Windows is out of the question. And I highly doubt that it's a new Windows update because the latest update I installed was around four days ago. It was running perfectly fine. Just for extra information, I was running NVIDIA Replay. Around the time before it stopped, I also can't find NVIDIA telemetry nor NVIDIA networking anywhere in my services. I don't know about what that is all about, but normally what we would do is take that and search Google for it. He may have because he did all that stuff already. Okay, and apparently a common problem. 
Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Can be for several potential re uh, uh, reasons. Uh, example, the uh, NVIDIA driver is corrupted. Some NVIDIA services are not running. Network adapter problem. Uh, graphic processing unit driver is compatible with the latest Windows update. And maybe that means is incompatible. That's supposed to be. Okay, so force restart NVIDIA services. Allow NVIDIA... Uh, Telemetry service to interact with the desktop, restall NVIDIA components, fix network adapter problem with Winsock reset command, update NVIDIA graphics to the latest version. So it sounds like you tried to do that. It sounds like it's not installing uh, NVIDIA uh, telemetry services if he's not seeing it on his computer at all. Um, boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Um, yeah, I mean, if you do everything that it suggests, uh, Winsock reset command. Oh, let's look at one more thing here before I tell him. Let's see. Oh. This is says uh, somebody fixed it. Where does it say? Where does it say that? Okay, going to find and say fixed it because that's what the was in the link that I clicked. Because so I fixed it. Go to GeForce.com, download the GeForce Experience app from the main page, install. Seriously, that fixed it without even needing a restart. And what's the next one? Oh, okay. That's from two years ago, that babe. Uh, let's see. Just want to throw my solution into this ring and play. Oh, turned off VPN. Okay. All right. I will suggest that. A pun. Googling. I found that some. Fixes were to was that turn off VPN or to turn off VPN. And Uh, let's see. And, of course, beyond those, I would, or I would suggest to not use GeForce Experience. Install just the driver for the video card. Because you do not need that software. You can install Chips the driver. Now the GeForce Experience does some other stuff for you and has the driver update right inside that app, but uh, you don't need that to do it. Here, this from Aberit. 
I need to put an antenna for internet way out somewhere else on my property to get a better signal. I don't know what parts I would need, but basically I need to put an antenna somewhere where it will get a good signal for internet. But I need to have the internet itself available at my house. I don't know how I would do this, but I assume the best option would be fiber optics. Uh, yep. Somewhere where we'll get a good signal for itself available at my house. Okay. Um, yes, fiber. Then you'd need uh, internet. That's cool, Matty Bags. Matty says a, a customer, he's a delivery driver for the Domino's. He said a customer asked if he could get a milk. And he gave him a $40 tip. That's expensive milk, dog. But if they got that kind of money, you will take it from them, I'm sure. As we all would. Let's see. So, yes, five. Right. Then you'd need either a mesh system or or um repeater uh routers google them yeah that's some that's some decent bags for delivering something you were going to deliver anyway and just stop off for a second and get milk that's excellent all right this from skyline star 1986 hdd ssd that's a hard disk drive that's the old spinny type of drives uh and the ssd which is the newer kind of solid state drive which is a lot faster and a lot less likely to fail Lost connection, but okay after a short shutdown and startup. Um, if it lost connection, but then it works when you restart it, it's maybe a temporary glitch. Uh, something happened with the driver. It could be uh, where they are plugged into the motherboard. Um, the controller is going out on that, maybe, as far as uh, the part on the motherboard itself which that means you need a new motherboard if that's happening. Uh, but generally on something like this, it's if it happens one time and then you test the drives and the drives are okay, um, you run an extensive test on those and that's going to um, take long enough to where you'll see if you have any, if it, you know, you have any uh, data being lost along the way there. And if it doesn't do that, then that's when, I mean, with computers, just say if it does it once, it's not a problem. It's a glitch. And so you reboot and you're fine, but you don't worry about it until it types again. So if it, if it, I mean, if it happens again, then you got a problem and you got to um, track it down. But I would do a test on those drives. Um, you can do like Crystal Disk Info. Um, you can do uh, Seagate as um, free um, hard drive testing uh, software on their website. Let's see. Uh, initially, my hard disk drive will randomly disconnect. It doesn't happen all the time. When it does, it will happen the whole day. When it doesn't, it will be fine for a whole week. SSD is running perfectly fine. Now, when I start up, it's like no boot device. It seems like it fails to detect my solid state drive. Press the reset button. Um. Change change the SATA ports on them. Replace the SATA cables because there's two cables involved. One goes to the hard disk drive. The other one goes to the solid state drive. Reset BIOS. Check drive smart status with Crystal Disk Info. All stats look good. Okay. Um, motherboard issue due to aging, maybe. Um... Do, 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 Let's see what I got. Out of curiosity, I have you checked the health of the drive with smart stats are good. If you confirm the drives are good with Christmas, then it sounds like your motherboard is on the last legs. Yeah. 
um that that could be it but like i said if it only happens one time but he says it 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 seems to be happening multiple times and you would um suspect the hard disk drive which is the old spinny type you would suspect that being a problem way before and of course that's going to be older definitely older technology uh and the drive itself is probably older as well so one way you can check that and the problem that that's having with the controller could be causing the problem with the solid state drive as well so a bad one bad drive can mess up the whole thing so yeah so what i would probably suggest in the is either you disconnect the hard disk drive for a while uh, or you replace that one with a solid state drive as well they are not that expensive anymore i know from a, a, a store called micro center we have here locally in columbus um i don't think they're selling online stuff anymore i think you have to go to the store but you can reserve it online uh, and that you can get a house brand solid state drive uh, sata connection uh, one terabyte for 85 dollars and that's what I would suggest there. But you could test that, as I said, by just disconnecting the hard disk drive and then um, just using your computer as you normally would. Let's see. This from Bot Ableton the next day. Bot Ableton the next day. I don't know what that means. All right, automatic repair loop plus path not found, C colon slash boot. Okay, so automatic repair loop, uh, that means there's a problem and it keeps detecting the problem. It can it cannot start, and it can boot, cannot, <coughs> excuse me, cannot boot to the desktop. And I think my chair is slipping down. Um, nope, it wasn't. Um, uh, and one of the problems may be that it's not seeing the drive. And so much like the previous case, the, the previous uh, post there, uh, it could have a drive problem or just the data on the drive is corrupted or uh, the motherboard is a problem. So let's see. PC is gone. Okay, I've tried every solution on the internet I could find. Well, there's someone else. Uh, this is, there is one thing that separates my situation from all tutorials and solutions I managed to find, which may be important to figure out how I might get my PC. When using a solution that involves using the command pro prompt and using the command attrib c boot bcd, I get the error path. Okay, so that means you don't have a boot folder on your drive or it's corrupted and it can't see it so um yeah boot to a windows flash and windows install flash drive you make with Microsoft's uh, media, whoops, media creation tool from their website. On another computer, obviously, not yours because it doesn't work. Uh, on another computer and click repair and see if that works the path not being found means that the folder is not there or the data is corrupt which could mean bad drive and or bad motherboard.
and or bad RAM test all of it. Google how if the USB flash drive repair does not work. Alrighty. Let's see, that's from Brace underscore SK3. Oh, Mac, MacBook might not be able to help any help with this. Let's see. Uh, my Word document suddenly shut down on my MacBook and it wasn't saved. How can I recover it? Yeah, you may be screwed. I have a MacBook and I was writing an essay that is due tomorrow and I really need it. Following instructions online, but so don't know what I'm doing. I thought my essay was on autosave, but since it's not saved, I was mistaken in my Word. Suddenly forced shut, but usually it recovers it automatically. Uh, yeah, if it doesn't, um, if it doesn't show up on there, it's probably, um, um, gone. It, uh, let's see, let's see, um, location for auto saved word documents on a Mac book. I'll just type that in there for him without doing the normal, um, without doing, let's see if that works. Whoops. Oh. Yeah, okay, that works. All right, so, yeah. Now, every once in a while, I will, I'm, I'm being nice there, but every once in a while, I will put in uh, the let me Google that for you thing where you just Google it. So you think everybody would Google it first, but I guess not. Some people just post on here. All right. From Swimming Cow Sperm. Interesting. Uh, how to get computer to stop logging out after 15 minutes due activity. I mean, 15 minutes to non-activity? Non-activity. Um, is there a device or idea that can trick mouse into moving around? So this, uh, you tried stapler on the keyboard, but this crashed servers. <laughs> yeah, you changed the sleep timer and the power setting, yeah. And you can't do that, so then no. <laughs> yep. Contact IT and see if they can set it to lock instead of logging. Oh, yeah. Yep, those are good ideas. Disable ad block pop up without ad block. What? Castanto. Hi, guys. Been having this problem forever when I visit certain sites like. Eternos, they tell me to disable ad block even if I don't have ad block or any other extensions. Interesting. I obviously tried different browsers and none of them works. I tried to boot a Linux distro to USB and the site works just fine. So the problem is probably related to Windows. Thanks in advance. These sites also work fine on my phone with both Wi Fi and cellular data. If I use a VPN, pop ups don't appear. I got no problem with that. Let's see, DNS-based filtering or using any ad blocking DNS provider anywhere will trigger ad block warnings. Okay. Okay, fair enough. I am using ad block plus, as you can see right there. And so there it is. And the number of items I blocked since I started using it, 387,121. Okay, we're done with that, and we're done with that. 
Okay. This from Stealth Man 55. Best solution to coax cable in bad location in new apartment. I just moved into a new place. There is a bedroom separated by a dining room, bathroom room with a long hallway to the living room. Ideally, I'd like my modem and router set up in the living room where I'd have my computer nearby and my TV consoles, etc. Unfortunately, the coax is only located in the bedroom. I hooked up my modem and router there and tested my signal in the living room and it was horrible. What are my options to get the coax to the living room or somehow get a better signal? Is it easy to ask my landlord if I get a coax wired in the living room? Or are there options I can take to do it myself somehow? Um, I recently, see, let's see, call your ISP in coax for what signal Wi-Fi? and mesh to a mesh wireless router that would work but sometimes uh, wireless doesn't work so well and uh, and or people just want wired i'm one of those wired people uh so um i'm actually in the bedroom here at this apartment and i changed it around so that the um my living room is right on the other side, right, right, basically right through this monitor right here, uh, right behind you guys. And uh, basically, uh, the, that's where the uh, cable line came in that I connected, uh, I would connect my modem and, and router there. But... I figured since probably I would do most of streaming and stuff in my bedroom that I would have them in here, which I do. And so I uh, found out which cable it was that was running there. And fortunately, the and you can find a lot of times this will be the case. I don't know about you, what your layout is, um, but your coax only located in the bedroom it comes up through the wall now if that same wall is um the living room wall on the other side then you can do the same thing i did which was i just opened up both um uh wall plates and i hooked up the correct um coax line going out to this way and then i connected uh my router to the modem and then I ran a network cable from the router into the living room so now the PlayStation which is out there uh, and I also have an extra one in case I move the computer out there or my son sometimes brings his computer with him uh, or if I ever would get a laptop uh, to, just to connect to the TV out there um, that I would have, uh, so I have two, um, uh, network cables going out there to have a wired connection out there. But yeah, so basically, um, that, but I don't know what his, uh, he doesn't say, let's see, a bedroom separated by dining room, bathroom with a long hallway to the living room. Oh, okay. Um, but as long as it, as long as it has a jack in there, a wall plate, and a coax jack in there uh in the living room it's probably connected somehow either um it depends if it's apartment if, it, if it's apartment it's just in the walls if it's a house it could be in the basement and then going up through to the walls um but uh yeah i would and if you don't know what you're doing um perhaps the isp could take care of that for you or you could hire a uh, uh, you know PC repair, a networking uh, guy to set that up for you, like that. But that's normally how it's going to be. If it it would normally have a coax running already to the living room, and so you just need to fix it wherever it is inside the wall and stuff. And generally, you should be able to do that by just removing the wall plate. You don't have to like break open the walls and find out where the where the connections are normally anything that's connected and it's like a, a split off 
or or a repeat or something like that or from wherever it comes from uh it's normally going to be right there where the uh wall plate is Right, the NVIDIA again, that's NVIDIA, NVIDIA Graphic Tribal is not compatible with this version of Windows. It's from ArcLine 111. The research many threads and not found a solution. Windows 10 Home 64 bit. Fully updated my NVIDIA 1080 Ti. Better video card than I have. I'm upset about that. Oh, it doesn't show in either device manager or oh, display it ever or in Specky. The last driver download I tried was NVIDIA driver. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, I have previously tried 12 other. This is on a PCET, uh, PC reset new install of Windows 10 then updated. There is no previous driver on the PC for the 1080. I ran DDU to check. Some device driver uninstall or something like that. That's what that stands for and again i don't i have not ever used that i don't know if that has adware or worse malware on it so let's see the 1080 ti that's a uh, geforce nvidia nvidia geforce uh card um uh isn't being recognized nor can i install a driver port well um you could if there was an executable you could just run that program and it would install it and either say this item is not on the computer or would just install the driver anyway and but it just wouldn't do anything if it doesn't have the affiliated uh hardware with it the driver doesn't do any good uh wouldn't install it giving similar error me what's the error message oh not compatible with this version of windows oh it's solved after I installed Windows 10, I immediately updated. However, Windows 10 hadn't fully updated to version 20H2 once I got it. Okay. Fully update. Okay. So we figured it out. Maybe perhaps the original poster figured it out himself. But basically what you would look for, and uh, you're not just looking at my browser right now. You're looking at my... Uh, what is it called? The uh, display. You look at my entire entire display. So when I uh, let me make sure that's working. Yeah. So you do see my start menu right there. So you right click on the start or the Windows logo right down there in the left side. This is Windows 10 that I'm using, uh, and you would go into Device Manager. And now where your video card would be, would be under Display Adapters. And as you can see, I just have the one, the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti. He has a 1080 Ti. And so it would either be in here, and if that's the only video card you have, it would either be in here and just say graphics driver or some generic thing if you didn't have the right driver but generally something as old as this one and as old as the 1080 and 1080 is uh, relatively old uh windows 10 has the drivers for it so it would it would install the correct driver there'd probably be a newer one on the nvidia website excuse me but windows 10 would have a built-in driver for it i apologize um um, it would be under, I think it's called other. It would, there would be another, uh, category here called other, and you would open it up and it would show you the other devices on there. And it would say, you know, whatever unknown device or something like that. If it, if it was not seeing it at all. And so I'm wondering if it was right there since, um, since uh he was having trouble with it and then once it once it completely updated it was fine so maybe that's what the dlao was all right this is from dark you know dark you know dark uh I lose audio about half the time i return from afk on a newish headset and very new computer until i restart the computer i've had i've heard there's several things several times that this has happened uh, according to the reddit 
People always have an audio problems. So, and when you say when you return from AFK, does that mean that it goes to sleep? Live alone, so it can't be someone pranking me when I'm not looking. It's good thinking, though. People do be doing this stuff. I estimate that about half the time, maybe less. I go AFK for even two to five minutes. When I return, I will hear nothing from my headset. Opening the sound mixer shows whatever audio playing is still being detected by the computer and is still sending it to the headset. There's just nothing. Change the output device to either of my screen. will successfully make the audio come out of the screens. But if I want my sound back in my headset, I need to restart the computer. Did you try unplugging it and plugging it back in? Is it a... a uh, audio jack that you're using or using USB. I've also had some success in updating the Realtek H definition audio driver, but that only worked about once or twice. I uh, also, every time I do this update, Windows tells me the driver was updated, but going back to the sound mixer shows the driver date and version, October 12th, 2021, are the same as before the update. I don't know what else I can do to fix this. The issue occurs enough to be really annoying, but too rarely. For me to reliably form many tests. Uh, no, if you can't make it happen, and this happens when you uh, take a car into the shop as well. It doesn't just happen with you know, electronic stuff like computers. Uh, if you take your car in and you can't make it do the problem or make it make the noise, uh, all they can do is hook it up to the computer and see if there's any error message as being thrown. So, yeah, so that's uh, what I would, the problem is that it doesn't happen all the time. And so you got to, you got to use it enough, long enough to make the problem happen again. Um, the advice would be to try your headset on a different computer and uh you try a different headset on your computer so if you have a friend that has a headset uh maybe you can swap headsets for a while and uh maybe they'll they'll let you do that for that way you each can test each other's uh headset and then you'll find out which one has a problem if any but it sounds like uh since uh windows still shows that it's coming um it's uh it's being the mixer showing that the sound is being uh played then i would suggest it's the headset so and yeah that's that's a, a lot of people don't like um especially on reddit don't like that advice when i tell them to try another part or like or like to test a monitor, I say try a different monitor on that one. Try your monitor on a different computer. And they're like, oh, I don't have that. Is there anything I can do now? Like change wires or something? And, uh, you know, there's really not. I mean, you, I mean, you could, if you have a different uh, uh, connection to the monitor, like it's a, a HDMI cable or VGA, or display port or whatever kind of connection it is if you have another cable you can certainly swap that out and and try that but uh the last time somebody uh, asked me that uh through reddit when i was trying to help uh him i believe it um uh they were talking about like wires inside the uh monitor and so which may have helped but that's like not not what i was talking about but anyway, that's how that's how you do that with uh, parts. If you don't have, if you don't have extra parts to test, then you have to like uh, impose upon friends or family members and uh, use their parts. All right, uh, let's see. CPU temp seventy five Celsius to eighty Celsius. I think that's all right. Uh, this is from OK Initial six seven seven two. Just bought a pre built PC and it's and hp and it is it's an hp omen with a ryzen 7 5800x and that's a an amd processor amd ryzen 7 5800x 
If it doesn't have a G at the end of the number, then it does not have graphics capabilities on it. So you do have to have a video card, but they do. One that's way better than better better. One that's way better than mine, and I'm upset about that. GeForce 3060 Ti. You get temps of 75C to 85C when playing Warzone. Is that normal? Keep in mind it's water cooled. And also, when I first got it a couple days ago, I was getting 140 uh, frames per second on Warzone, and now I'm only getting about 60, 80 uh, frames per second. Any info on what it started dropping for you? Mean why it started dropping frames? Um, um, what is 85 Celsius? I'll search the Google for that and it'll might tell me where okay it's a 85 Celsius to F uh, that would be 185 degrees so that's not that's not boiling so I think that let's see 85 Celsius. Okay for gaming. Eighty five degrees is fine. Anything above ninety degrees is not. So you're getting close there according to this. But uh not. This should not be an issue as high and intensive GPUs and CPUs are meant to heat up to these temperatures while playing games. If you notice your PC is throttling throttling stuttering, shutting down, crashing, overheating, etc. Uh, then you know you got a problem. So much higher thermal limit. Uh, 85 Celsius is warm but safe to game. And that's even uh, on a laptop they're talking about there. So that is fine, but you will get throttling when it does get too hot. So... Um, also, when I first got it a couple days ago, I was getting 140 frames per second on Warzone, and now, okay, so here's here's an issue, too, that people have all the time. When I first got it a couple days ago, I was getting 140 frames per second on Warzone. Um, also, when you first got it, it didn't have all the crap you installed on it, likely. Not saying you definitely did, but likely all the crap you installed on it after you got it. And so a lot of that crap is going to be running uh, when you install it. it. It adds itself to Windows Startup and it starts up every single time you start up the computer. And so even when you're going to play Warzone and even when you're not using those programs at all, and especially if you use some, if you downloaded some kind of computer to make your, you know, you downloaded some kind of software to make your computer faster, that does not happen. Uh, chip has a higher range. Yep, looks okay. Except all temp. GPU is good. It really gets to 70. It's just the CPU that has me work. Some uh, video games use more CPU than uh, that. And I'll throw that right there. Some games use more CPU than others. Um, since it was fine when you first got it, consider any programs you may have installed since then, that probably added themselves to start up, and so they are running all the time, every time you start the computer. You can clean up startup by uh, going to task manager. Whoops, task manager. 
and more details and the start up tab and disabling whoops all that stuff except antivirus you can and reboot you can also uninstall any non windows defender antivirus and windows defender will enable itself again Alrighty, what time is it? 8 46. I got about 15 minutes more. I accidentally this by loyalty over money 22. Alright, that's pretty cool. Loyalty should be worth more. And I would say at least in almost most cases, if not all. Uh, accidentally disabled my backspace button. It only works when changing Microsoft user. So my backspace button stopped working. And after hours of trying to fix my keyboard, I noticed that it worked perfectly fine when I changed to the guest Microsoft user. Windows 8.1. Yikes, that's years ago, dog. Um, could anyone help me enable the button without having to copy all my files over to a different user profile or creating a new one? Um, <laughs> does it work using the on screen, on screen keyboard? Uh, yes. But when I do it manually on my main Microsoft account, it's just blocked. I tried updating driver. No. Are you using any sort of program like Sharp Keys or another Mac recorder or using or using gaming mode? Keyboards are browser and the software is everything on default. Uh, try another keyboard if you have one. Certainly a weird issue. Indeed. I don't know what I mean you can set different things for different profiles. Uh you can have different settings, but I don't think just one button would be disabled. That's weird. It could be the combination of that profile and the Razer keyboard, which has a whole bunch of other like things you can program on it, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, so if he tries it with another keyboard and it's fine, then it's not his profile. It's uh, the combination at, at least, and at most it's just the Razer keyboard. And so he needs it. Maybe there's a way he can, uh, Put all the all the settings back to normal, back to default on that. Excuse me again. Apologize. This from Gabu Guntgiu. Uh, Intel Opane with 500 gigabyte solid state drive. Does anyone know how to secure erase this solid state drive? BitLocker does not erase free space, and so will not help. Okay, so um to to completely erase any drive, you have to write completely over it. You have to fill every single, and there are so, there is software that can write ones and zeros into every every square inch of that drive. And so let's see if that's what the people recommended or something else. I'm not. Aware. Yeah, DBAN is one of those programs. Even not recommended for solid state drive. Yeah, a bunch of it. Let's see. Intel solid state drive toolbox. Interesting. I have not heard of that. But yeah, the because the of the way the solid state drive works, some of the uh, tools for the spinny drive don't work on it. Oh, in the life announcement for Intel Solid State Drive Toolbox. Oh, let's see what this has from takes. Let's see in the maintenance, September 20. 
If it allows you to view driver information, drive health, estimated drive life remaining, smart attributes, identify device information, optimize performance using trim functionality, optimize performance in RAID 0, uh, obtain notifications of new Intel software versions, update the firmware of the drive, uh, run quick and full diagnostic scans to test the read and write functionality of an Intel solid state trial. Uh, check and tune system settings for optimal performance, view system information, hardware configuration. Run secure race on a secondary Intel solid state drive. Oh, so you can't, you can't, obviously can't run it on the one you're booting from. So it would just have to be a data drive, probably. Uh, let's see. And it says what... Um, and this may just uh, work on Intel Drive. Oh, excuse me. I apologize. So sleepy. Burping and sleepy. Man. All right. Computer won't wake from sleep from Duna. Do not one. Uh, when putting my desktop to sleep, I can't wake it up unless I force shut it down by long pressing the power button. And that is a hard power off, and you should not do that because shutting it off that way can lead to data corruption. And the reason uh, for that is that uh, whenever it is, even in sleep mode, it is moving data back and forth um rewriting reading and rewriting data to the to and from the hard drive and uh when you do that you risk uh, a problem uh when you do the um force shutdown but you have to sometimes sometimes that's the only way to shut it down okay try disabling fast startup disabling and enabling hibernation updating drivers and enabling my keyboard mouse to wake up from sleep i even tried doing this weird solution of taking out the ram and blowing on it which didn't work my computer would turn on this about oh which is, the power supply is fine as i used it in a previous computer where sleep work properly uh that doesn't mean the power supply didn't go bad since then but depends on how long ago that was when pressing the keyboard to wait the keyboard would light up and it seems some indicator light on the motherboard turns on but the monitor black so i thought there was a problem where it did wake up but simply didn't display but when doing a pick Power config, last week command, it says zero, which means it's never woken up in the first place. Okay, I'm stopped. Any help would be appreciated. Maybe corrupted Windows profile profile install. Yeah, you could you could just do another one. Uh you could reinstall. Yeah. And there was a small hiccup in the installation process when it had to restart. Forgot to change the boot order, so I had re had to restart one more time. But it's installed Windows 10. Well, that's probably okay then. Um, that you can change the yeah you can change the power settings so that it never goes to sleep. Is is one thing you could do to get around it. Guess I would just reinstall. Yeah, since you just did it 10 days ago, it doesn't take that long to install Windows. And you couldn't possibly have that much data on it already. So, yeah, that's what I would do. Uh, let's see if anybody... Nope, nobody has any idea. This from Sinkerly Lost. Sincerely Lost, maybe. Um, lower use technology. This is about a phone, so might be able to help, might not be. I like to severely lower my use of technology, but I don't know if that's possible yet. Excuse me. So I was thinking of just limiting it. I have an Alcatel tablet, iPhone 8, and a decent speaker, but no computer, laptop, or desktop. My idea is to use the tablet for music and computer use and a flip phone for calls. Okay. 
Then I was thinking maybe having a tablet would still be too tempting because I'll still be, it'll still be RV on me all the time. I don't know what you're talking about, Willis. Maybe an MP3 player for music and keep the tablet at home. Am I making this too complicated and need to just cut down without all the devices or does this sound like a decent plan? Uh, you can do whatever you want to. Dog, I mean, you don't have to have music. You don't have to have computer use at all. Yeah, you can just quit cold turkey. Uh, or you can, you know, you can use whatever devices you want to use. I don't, I don't know. If you'd like to severely lower your use of technology, uh, do that then. And, and stop trying to wonder what you can use for what. Uh, whatever you don't want to live without, use. I'm writing this from Ali Yaloon. Ali Yaloon? Ali Yaloon? Say it in way five times. Uh, my computer says megabit per second is 144, but online it tests say 5 to 10. Hello, I'm using a Wi-Fi adapter for my computer. My router is downstairs. I got a Wi-Fi adapter with an antenna. With an antenna, as said in the title, my megabits per second is very high, but when I do any tests, they say much different. What is happening that is getting in the way of connection? Update. Switch to Wi-Fi 5G, and now it's up to 100, so... Yep, that's what you gotta do. Alrighty, Zizzers. Uh, small app, small A application in my overflow. Recently, there's been a heart symbol with a bumpy line going through it in my overflow menu that opens the MSN website every time I click it. Tried right clicking to close it, but a menu does not show up. Um, I think what happened is, you know, like where it shows the weather, like right there, where I'm trying it right now, uh, right at the bottom there next to the time, um, uh, I will see stocks on there sometimes, and let's see if, uh, Whoops. Let's see if there is a stocky thing there. Katy Perry is 37. We're all getting old. JJ McCarthy adds more fuel to Ohio State. State up north rivalry. Uh, they won once in the past 10 years. So you got to win a couple more times in that for it to be a rival. Rivalry, but what is um? Yeah, I don't see it, but like a stock symbol would look like that and have the the wavy line through it. So maybe you're seeing a stock symbol. Picture, please. Use M Gary. Yeah. In my overflow menu, is this what he's talking about? Overflow right there with the carrot. Yeah, picture of it would be good. But opening the MSC, if I, uh, what does it say? If he, if he left clicks it, no, it would be, it would be something in here. And if you left click it, that would definitely open a program. Alrighty, and 8.59, let's do one more. Alright, this is from 71st Links. A laptop, GPU, which is Graphical Processing Unit, which means a video card, and on a laptop that is built onto the motherboard. And even, and that's going to be 
less of a you don't want to do gaming on a laptop if you can at all avoid it um, because the same chip will not be able to run as fast in a laptop due to the due to how small it is there's more heat there and so it would have to throttle down more because it would get too hot so let's see hello people so i'm having this quite disconcerting problem with my laptop while playing games with the dedicated gpu it makes sort of a soft rattling noise it's not the fan i tried turning it off yet the sound persisted uh you should not try to turn the fan off the sound also appears to increase in intensity based on what's happening on the screen it is less noticeable while looking at the sky compared to when looking at areas with high foliage density is it normal or yeah probably normal but you should not a uh, soft rattling noise how do you know it's the what makes the soft rattling noise there's no moving parts inside there i mean it sounds like a fan thing not necessarily you gpm gpu fan though there's probably two or three and they all speed up therefore the bad fan will sound worse as temperatures rise inside yeah so i don't know there's not other than fans there's no moving parts on the inside it's all it's all just a circuit board and the video card is not a card it's just a chip that's built on that same motherboard um and so I don't know what, what else would be rattling except a fan inside a um, laptop. There shouldn't be anything anything else moving inside there. Alrighty, and this concludes, I think it's the 15th tech support with Coach Steve Money. And thanks so much for watching. Uh, and one more time, I am Steve Simpson, also known as Coach Steve Money, and I am the Ramsey Solutions Certified Financial Coach, and yes, that's Dave Ramsey's company. And you can schedule a free financial consultation slash assessment with me at calendly.com slash Coach Steve Money. Uh, that link is at the top of the chat. And in the video description below, you can email me about anything, CoachSteveMoney at gmail.com. And donations, paypal.me slash CoachSteveMoney. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, like, and comment. Thanks so much. Make smart technical support decisions and financial decisions every day.